Good morning. Hi, Katrina. You're the only one not muted. <laughs> Someone talk to me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? Uh, good. It's, it's good. I feel like it's already like 12 o'clock. I've been up like since four. So I feel like, is it oh half the day over yet? Oh. oh, here we go to a new section. Are you guys excited? Say yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that Ben? I don't know the guy's voices as well. It's Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Kitten Daniel. Mary Daniel. I meet Samantha. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> Did you see your or see your name and <laughs> hear your voice? You guys um switch wasn't clinicals this week, right? You're doing clinicals different next week? Next week. Next week, okay. Because we're trying to figure out who am I going to see and who's not. And oh, lots of change right now. Hi, Mel. Good to see your face. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday, everyone. All right, let's take a look here. Just give everybody a few minutes. Jennifer's here. Hi, Jennifer. Good morning. A while. Oh, I almost forgot what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I grade your papers, but <laughs> wonderful. Good morning, Cece. Morning. Sorry, I'm making coffee. No, no. Make your coffee. <laughs> You're gonna need it. Lewis. I really hate this whole music thing. I know we have to. <laughs> ah! All right. I want Adabelle's here. I feel like, are you guys sure? Like, I feel like it changed. Like, some people are here that normally aren't. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Adabelle, you're not in clinical then on Mondays anymore. Uh, no, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm so confused, but I don't, I don't know where most of you are. I just know who's normally here. And I'm like, wait, there's a lot more people here. Beautiful. Okay. And normally it tells me how many, and it's not telling me. I usually wait till 8.05. It's 8.07. So we will get started. Um, we have 20 right now. Thank you. Thank you. Usually we have about, I would say anywhere from, usually the average is 25, and then by the end, 22, and then that's pretty good, especially for as many people who may want to actually just watch it, or are at, I know there's, I think, 14 in clinical, maybe, or something like that, maybe 10, so they can't obviously be at two places at once. Uh -oh. Perfect. Jovan is here. Awesome. Okay, we got everybody, Denise, Jenny. Okay. Is that? Yeah, perfect. All right. So, oh, um, I think I made an announcement about this. I know I, I mentioned it in my last video, just a couple little housekeeping things, is that in order to kind of make this a little bit more time efficient for myself, for you, I'm not doing the pre-videos, then the video on Monday morning and posting both. It's just, it's a lot to watch. This next three weeks is a little different. So it's like, I'm just kind of going with what fits. I am going to still continue with that method because I do think it is the most efficient method. And even, especially for myself, um, not to become overwhelmed with so much stuff to be able to present to you. And I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed either. Again, and I say this every time and I'm going to say it every time, especially with these chapters, if you came and read ahead, which is 
ho the hope, or at least skimmed, is that it's a pretty, uh, from here on out, I would say until GI, I think GI, I, I love GI. Um, yeah, that's pretty more uh, kind of like integumentary to me. It's a little more innate. Like you kind of, I think we have a little bit of better understanding about it just because we have a lot of experience with our own GI issues um, in my at least experience as teaching. So that seems to be a lighter topic, just like integumentary. The next two are not. So the one that we're doing right now is um, hematology and immunology. And then we're doing, and that also includes HIV and AIDS, which is next week. And then, so today is technically two chapters and there's just no way to really get, I mean, really efficiently, I'm just going to be honest. And unless someone's, I don't know, I could not figure it out. I'm like, this is just too much information, even the important stuff. Because like I always say, I want you to know what you need to know. Yes, B, tell, B cells, D cells. All, all these T cells, all this stuff, that's all very important. But what is the most important part of that? And I'm just going to give a quick example. Knowing that they are white blood cells. And what do, what, blood, what do white blood cells do? They keep us healthy and they help with our immunity, right? So that's the big, big, big picture. And of course, we'll rein in in a little bit because we're nurses and we should know a little bit more than just that. But it, it goes so deep if you read the book and, and I don't want to, I want you to really get what's important. So what I think I might do, because there's just no way we're going to get through both chapters. It's just, I, I don't think it's gonna happen with the way I've set it up because I started with chapter one and I'm like, okay, this leaves us like no time. I am going to make a short voiceover PowerPoint for allerg allergic reactions only because, so there will be two videos. I think I'm going to do it voiceover PowerPoint though, instead of like a live video, um, because it really doesn't have to be that long. And I don't know if you guys read it. It's pretty, um, and please tell me if you disagree. I feel it's pretty straightforward. We're, we're, we're pretty, um, familiar with allergic reactions, maybe some of the, you know, specifics and, and, and terminology, which I do have a little thing that we're going to do a flashcard thing. Um, just to kind of get us familiar with some of the terminology, but for the most part, I, I feel like chapter 19 is more kind of review and it's, it's, it's more simplistic. Chapter 18 is not. So if you've looked at it, I think you would probably agree with me. If you have not looked at it, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And as we go, you'd be like, oh yeah, wow, this is a lot. So I'm just going to start out, see where we go. Um, it's a lot of information and I just want to give you kind of a brief, a, kind of agenda so you can expect um, what we're going to do. I do realize, or I just realized yesterday, I don't give you guys a break. <laughs> um, so please, if I don't remind, will you please remind me somebody, um, you deserve at least one five minute break just to go to the bathroom. I would say after at least like the first 40 minutes and then a 15 minute break at some point to like get up and stretch, go refill your coffee, get some tea and all of that. I just get excited and I just keep going. So, but I did write it down, so I would hopefully not do that today. Um, so pretty much what our plan today is, our, we are going to start with re reviewing terms on flashcards. Um, I did the flashcards, that's why I woke up so early, because I had them, all the definitions down, but I needed to make them, but I had not used this software before. So they are small, whatever. I, it is what it is, at least we get to see them. It's, again, something different and not um, minute and keeping, you know, just reading off of a, a slide and we can actually interact with each other. Um, I do have a couple of videos. So this is a technically a two hour and 10 minute class. So I have, this was kind of a <laughs> um, fun activity that I did over the weekend trying to find I wanted to find the perfect three that went together that built upon each other because if you've had me before, I like to build upon things and I like repetitiveness and it, they just do, they did that so well. And each video is about nine minutes long. I know that sounds like a long time, but three videos time, what's nine times three? That's the first question. 27. Good job. <laughs> yes. It took me a minute. I'm not going to lie. Yesterday when I was adding this up, I'm like, wait, what? Nine, one, two, three, four. Um, it's been a while. So that's only 27 minutes. So I know it seems like a lot, but you will hopefully see after it will make sense because there's a lot of overlap and overlaying and there's 
it's a good way of um, explaining it and you get some pictures and, and all of that stuff, which I think is very, very important. So that's a part of it. So we'll do 27 minutes and we will break that up. That will be part of our break. We'll watch a video and go take a break. Um, something else we're going to be doing is a couple NCLEX questions. I think we're going to do um, definitely at least one, but one to three. Uh, just again, to kind of break it up, look at things differently, um, be able to discuss different aspects of NCLEX questions, because that is obviously what we're here for, for you to be prepared to take the NCLEX exam. So we will do that as well. Um, I do have a PowerPoint slide. I'm not in love with it. I did, um, I'm really trying not to create the wheel, even though it's driving me crazy not to. Um, and I'm going to, I just, it just, there hasn't been time. So we're going to use, um, this Anne did make a, a fabulous one. It's just not my, we think differently. So, um, how many are on right now? I don't know why I can't see it today. 25. Yay. That's our magic number. Okay. So welcome everyone else that just signed on. Good morning. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and then after we watch the videos because of my repetitiveness, so we're starting off doing, I think it's like 12 uh, flashcards. You know how you guys do those flashcards online and you practice together? What is that called? Quizlet. Thank you. Quizlet. And that's what I was going to use originally and I couldn't remember the name. And I was like, you know what? Just do it yourself. Make it. It'll happen. And it did. It worked. Um, so then we're going to do the flashcards again, more toward the end of the class, just because what I want you to see is, I always say I kind of have a method to the madness. and I only have, by the way, 10 more uh, tests to grade, just in case you have not got your grade yet. You will. I, I'm i working as hard as I can to get it done today. The goal was yesterday, because I wanted to like close out immunity, uh, in, integumentary completely to start fresh today. It just didn't happen. So I will do my very best to get that done today so we can just kind of move on, if you will, um, to this section. But you all did really well. Did you guys feel good about, I mean, the short answer questions, all of that, I was really impressed by the, the, just the wording and the way you were thinking about it and the way you, you, um, I was just very, very impressed. I was expecting 43s, 44s, and there were a lot of 50s I, and 48s and 46s. I mean, it was great. So good job. Um, and then we'll do the PowerPoint at the end more as kind of a, did we cover this? Did we cover this? to make sure that we kind of have everything together. And then we'll see where we are. And if we have time, we'll move into chapter 19. I think we'll have a little time to kind of start there. Um, and I do have some flashcards on it that we'll start with at the beginning as well. So we'll just kind of see where the time takes us because as we all know, time goes very fast. Any questions or concerns? Does anybody, because if you have read the chapters, um, you've noticed probably a lot of words and a lot of, in my opinion, these two chapters are a lot of terminology. And if you understand the terminology, that's a huge beginning to understanding what's going on in the body. Wh whoever has read, could, do you agree with that? Does that make sense? Like if you understand what is an antibody, what does it do? And then you can build upon that. So that, that's what I'm hoping to do. Okay, so let's get started. It's already 8.18. Let me share my screen with you. Uh, any questions or comments about anything or real quick before we get started? Nope, okay. All right. Not that. Hmm. No, don't look at that. Pretend you didn't see that. We can't even see your screen. Oh, good. Thank, thank yeah, you. You didn't share. You're good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. See? You guys are so good. All right. Now, now I shall share. I've never used this before. I was gonna use the Jeopardy screen because it'll let you do flashcards too and it didn't. And so I just improvised and we're gonna just kind of deal with it. I know it's a little bit small. I'm sure there's a way to make it big. I just don't see it. I'm sure you guys will see it and be like, Amanda, press this button. I tried to stretch it out, it won't stretch out. But can for the most part, can you guys see that? 
Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. So this is not a game. This isn't like points. This is just kind of to get us thinking and, and going through the, um, how I had mentioned many times in the beginning of the chapter, you guys have those terms and the terms, they do, they, they're important. They're, they're, they're put there for a reason. So I wanted to start with some of the terms. Um, so we're going to start off with, and I did them, you'll notice they're almost kind of backwards. Actually, this one is backwards. Okay, whatever. We're just going to live with it. You know what? Just, you didn't see that. Okay. So <laughs> I say I messed it up either way. All right. So we're going to start with the first one. So anyone can, um, I wish we had like buzzers or something, but it doesn't, that's not how, the way the world works. So only one person can, can answer one question. So please, like if, for example, um, Kalisha answered number one, please, you know, and then Adabella, whatever, just only answer one question. So the person produces his or her own antibodies. And I just did this right now, like 5 a.m. So I'm sorry about the typos, antibodies. So they are really important. So I wrote it twice. Um, and there is a naturally way to do this and an artificial way to do this. So what would, what do you think that the answer would be? Like someone actually Next acquired time. the illness and then they produced the antibodies naturally because they had it. And then the artificial one, wouldn't that be the vaccine? Cause we give them the dead virus and then they obtain the antibodies that way. And can you tell me, and, and yes, can you tell me a little bit more about the, um, can someone, or actually, good job. Can somebody else give me an example of what a naturally artificial, like, what would that look like? Give me an example. Let's think about the season we're in right now. Would it be the flu shot and influenza vaccine? So it could be the influenza. So, and that one, I'm actually glad that you mentioned. That's why I wanted to talk a little bit about that one. Cause that one's a little, there's kind of two different ways to, to look at it. So you have one, which, so we're obviously um, putting a, either a almost dead component into our body or a completely deactivated, um, like TB is deactivated when you're putting under the skin, if you're doing a skin test, completely deactivated. So you're saying, for example, um, like the nasal flu is a live vaccine versus the um, deactivated influenza um, injection. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why most people get sick when they get the one uh, that's me because I, I don't like to, I don't like injections. So I do, I do the nasal one and I get sick. Um, so yeah, that's actually a very good example. And every year they make a new one, right? Because your body sometimes can't hang on to that memory of, hey, and we'll go, we'll build upon this, but it can't remember, hey, I need to attack that, right? So knowing the difference between what an antibody is and what an antigen is. So I, if, if you have trouble remembering this, which I always do, even to this day, sometimes I'm like, which one's good, which one's bad, which one's good, which one's bad. So what I think of is, is antibody, right? So an antigen is bad, antibody is good because I want it out of my body. So I want an anti, I totally spelled that wrong too. Anyway, whatever. Antibody, I want it, I want it not within me. So if that helps you at all, um, that seemed to help me just a little tidbit. And the flu shot is very special in a way where your body, that's why we, we make a new one every, or we, they, someone in the world makes a new one every year because what happens to the flu every year? It adapts. It changes. Yeah, exactly. It strains. Exactly. And your memory cells remember the old one, but they don't remember that one. And you'll, we'll talk a little bit about more about memory cells. And so just one of the videos, which is fascinating. Um, the body is just fascinating. So excellent example. And then what about, um, so naturally artificial and then artificial. So artificial, we talked about that. And then um, what about naturally artificial? What would that mean? So and, and it's okay if you don't know it, because I, I, I would imagine most of you probably did not read, and that's not bad. I'm not mad or, or anything like that. I mean, I know you guys have a lot on your plate, and you have to kind of put your time where it's important. But does anybody know what a naturally, artificial, the artificially one, we got down. You guys did excellent. That's perfect. Examples. What about naturally? Let's say I sneezed on, and I, I don't mean to just keep picking on the same people, but it's who's on my screen. Let's just say I sneezed on Stacy. You're like literally the first one on my screen, sorry. And you inhaled my bodily fluids, right? 
I mean, even if you don't see it, you've seen those miss commercials or whatever, and you see all that stuff coming out. What's going to happen? You're going to take in stuff from my body. Now, let's say at that time, and we're using the flu both times, but whatever, it's fine. It, it's, it's the same um, concept for many, many um, d different viruses and bacteria and whatnot. But let's just say I had the flu and I was contagious. And that's why I, I hate when people, and this is my personal, I, I don't say, I don't like when people say, well, I'm not contagious. Well, how do you know that? How, can you, can, how do, t tell me how you know that. How, how do you know you're not contagious? Unless there's, obviously there's certain things, but when people have the flu and they say, oh, I'm not, but I'm not contagious. Well, you don't really know that. But anyway, side note. So let's say, okay, you're sneezed on, you, you took in um, my, my, my flu, you got it now, that virus is in your body. What is your body? And you don't have to answer this necessarily, Stacey. Um, anyone can that has not um, answered something yet. But what, what does your body do? Your body's it incredible. Someone started. <laughs> it, it increases your temperature and everything to try and kill the virus. And then you can, um, you start sneezing and producing more phlegm and stuff to get it out as well. Okay, so someone were, did read, and that is the right answer, but you it, it's over, you even jumped ahead. So yes, you are absolutely correct. So keep that in the back of your mind. Who said that? Something else. <laughs> Why can't I get your voices together? Kalisha, stopped. <laughs> Kalisha, no. Um, so, but, but that is right. So keep that in mind, please, because that's going to be a question later. Um, but what else is going to happen? What is, what is, Katrina's body going to do to try to help prevent this from happening again. Think of the flu vaccine. Think what the flu vaccine does. It creates antibodies so that if the flu does become in contact with them after, let's say, Jessica, and I switched my screen, so I'm not going to, I will pick on several people. Um, so let's say Jessica gets her flu shot. She comes into contact with the flu. Hopefully it's that right strain. I'm not even going to get into how I feel about the flu shot. Um, that's here nor there. That's like politics to me. And we're not talking about that either. She gets her little shot. And let's say she comes into the co contact with that most popular flu that year that they made. And you came into contact with Katrina, who is below you. And she had that flu. And you came into pretty close contact at this time. We're pretty, um, we're lucky because we have all of our PPE and all that stuff. But let's just say that COVID didn't happen. I wish and you contracted it from her. So now you have the, uh, contracted the, the virus from Katrina, but you are now protected by that flu virus and it's the same, or, or by the flu injection, and it's the same one. So now your body has already produced, because what happens? They put this dead um, virus inside of you. Your body will recognize it. And I'm using some fancy terms and some non-fancy terms again, because what do I want you to really remember kind of thing? And I put a, I did add a worksheet. I am done by the way, with the syllabus. It is now done. I did add a couple things yesterday as a side note. I can't really, um, say why on this cause it is recorded. I, I guess I can. I am, uh, I need to make sure that you, you basically have to have a certain number of hours outside of the classroom. And I was trying to uh, make it a little bit lighter because you have so many chapters but I was told I needed to put more. So that's why I did add a couple things yesterday. So I hope you all did not have um, chest pain. So, um, but that will reiterate a lot of what we're talking about today as well. All right, so you got your flu shot, you have antibodies, which are good, we like them, right? So you have antibodies that actually grow onto, I would say white blood cells, that would make sense, right? Certain white blood cells, we have several different kinds and several different subcategories, right? So our white blood cells, that is your body's defense mechanism, correct? Mm -hmm. Where do your white blood cells, oh no, that's a question on here, Never mind. So now what's gonna happen? Jessica already has all these beautiful antibodies that can fight away Katrina's virus. And what's gonna happen? It has a, and it builds a memory. It builds a long-term memory and it's going to stay there. And more than likely what is going to happen, unless Jessica is immunocompromised, what is going to, what is more than likely going to happen? Do you think she's probably going to get the flu? Um, no. no. 
you wouldn't get the you you wouldn't get the flu because you're protected because because Katrina is giving you the same strain if it's the same strain and now you've created antibodies those antibodies are going to say uh okay so I have a memory I can fight you I'm better than you and we'll talk about the different type of white blood cells and how all of that works but more than likely you're not going to get sick that's amazing right that's great and that would be the hope but with your luck, she'd have a different strain and then you'd get sick and then you'd miss school and then you'd start, it would be this whole thing. So are there any questions about, so if a person, so antibodies, we know are good, right? We want antibodies. We want to get bad stuff out or kill it. And we'll talk about that. The phagos, the phag, we'll call them phagocytes. I don't know why I don't like that word. Um, but phagocytes and all of, we'll, we'll talk about how all of those work, the B ones, the T ones, um, and, and, um, apto I can't say it, but aptosis, aptosis. Um, so any question on naturally artificial and artificially? So I thought it was very well explained by um, Kalisha and myself. Make sense? Okay. All right. Now I have not done this before. I'm just going to press next. Hopefully it does what it's supposed to do. Yay. Except I forgot to put the other thing. Um, <laughs> I need a personal assistant if anyone's looking for work. <laughs> um, and you can do this for me. Okay, so to respond to a foreign material, so foreign antigens. So if your body is trying to respond to a foreign material, what is it doing? I did this on purpose to make it hard. Usually it's flipped the other way. I made it harder by doing it backwards because I wanted you to think, really think about it. Think about the system we're talking about. What is this chapter called? Immunity. <laughs> so yes, immunity. So what does immunity mean in general? That's not the answer, but it is a sidetrack parallel to the answer. What is immunity? We all, we always talk about it. Oh, I hope you have a good immune system. Oh, immunity. Oh, this, that, the other. What, what is actually immunity? You're able to destroy like the uh, pathogen. Exactly. And I want to make something clear. You'll hear me say pathogen and antibody. They're, they're, um, what do you say when it's both? interchangeable, if you will. So pathogen and antibody, you will hear me say both of them. And in videos or reading or talking or lecture or whatnot, you will hear both of the words. They mean the same thing. So that is very, very, very important. So absolutely. So your immune system. So whoever said that first one, you are correct. And antibody. So what, what is exactly an antibody? I know we just saw the definition or whatnot. We know it's something foreign that's in our body. We just talked about if, um, uh, Katrina sneezed on Jessica. We know that something foreign is going potentially in her body. We don't want that in her body. That's not what's supposed to happen. Um, luckily, she had the flu shot, so she had the antibodies already, right? Antibody, get it out. It's something, part of our defense mechanism. So she's very lucky that she's not going to get sick. But a lot of the times, that's not what happens, right? We get all sorts of things that we get inside of our body, and antibodies do what? Once they're inside of your body, what do they do? They attack. They attack. Yes. It's, and, and it's bad. We don't want it. They attack. They multiply. They just go haywire, right? Is that a word? Haywire. Hi, they go haywire. Um, and, and they're basically, I mean, they're multiplying and they're basically trying to break you down, if you will. But Luckily, if your immune system is not compromised, even if it is compromised, there are ways to um, help boost immunity and whatnot, but that's a different um, uh, lecture. Um, your, your antibodies, sorry, your antigens have all of these cool things which are coming up on the other flashcards. And I keep saying memory because your antibodies, I'm sorry, your antigens build memory. And I'm going to keep saying that because I think that's very, very important. I really want you to remember that. They build memory because if you're doing patient teaching to a patient, again, I don't want you to sit there. Well, I mean, you could, but you really want to get what's, what's important to get across. 
in your mind, you know, all this other stuff, but what are you going to teach? You're not going to sit there and give this long explanations about B cells and macrophages and phagocytes or phagocytes and all of these things, right? Or, or maybe you will, but it, it, that can be very confusing. So thinking of nursing considerations, I would want to be able to explain if, if, if a, well, we're not doing peds. I was going to say if a parent came in, well, but yeah, a bit of a parent came in with their, um, their teenager who's afraid of needles and they're getting their flu shot and they're 15 and they're, they're super scared. And they're like, what are you putting in me? I would want to be able to explain how the flu, like, how does this work? Wouldn't you want to be able to explain how it works in the most simplistic way? Stop yawning. Trina, oh my God. Oh. I'm going to switch. I'm not looking at you anymore. We're going on. All right. I'm gonna... People don't have pictures. This is, see, this is why I stay over there because I can see your face. Like I'm not talking to myself. Okay. I'll stop. I'm sorry. I'll stop. No. <laughs> okay. No. Breathe. I can just hear it now. I'm going to get a, Amanda said, don't breathe in class. Okay. Cause I can actually see Amy, Katrina, uh, and a couple of you, the other ones didn't want to be seen. All right. So does that make sense what antibodies are? Antibody, think bad, anti or, or yeah, no. Antibody is good, antigen is bad. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, next. So we have chemical markers that identify cells or molecules. Human cells have these dot, 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 dot. That's where I want the answer. Thousands of these will be tolerated by the body's immune system, whereas these are seen as foreign and will be destroyed in one of several ways by the um, white blood cell system in one of several ways. I think I just did the whole one backwards, by the way. I think I was thinking it was antigen, it was antibody, so hopefully someone caught that or at least understood it. So it's going to be antigen. So I think it's the last one I said antigen and I meant antibody. Did I do that? Did I say that? I think the I last one you put antibody. Did I actually talk about antibody? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Um, I've been literally, this has been my life for like the past like 72 hours. So I'm kind of like, where am I? What's an antigen? So an antigen. So we're going to, we already talked about this again, reiteration. So we have an antigen. Um, which as I put here, and I think I actually did it correctly, um, writing except for the capitalization, your body is fighting and keeping a memory. Again, I'm going to keep saying it. That is so important. And it's not just for testing, but it is just important. But if I'm saying it's important, usually that means it probably might be important for a test. And as if you noticed, um, there are, there's only one quiz. I didn't make a mistake. There really is only one quiz this time. Okay. And then next and one test. Each section, I'm doing something more of something and to make kind of switch it up. Okay, so we have your antigen. Is an antigen, antigen good or bad? Uh, bad. 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 You guys always want, you can use your fingers too. You know, I mean, I know it's hard to click. Um, yes, it's bad. Antigen equals not good overall. Um, but in a way, I could say, I could fight that and be like, well, actually, Miss Amanda, it's not bad because it's helping your body create defense mechanisms in your body. Absolutely. So I'm looking again at the bigger picture so that you can differentiate the difference between an antigen and an antibody, right? Because if an antigen gets in your body and your antibodies can attack it and make a memory of it to be able to get it again, in a way, it's kind of good to have that antigen, right? So I, I can see if any, if any of you are thinking like, well, Miss Amanda, it can be good and bad. Yes, it can be good and bad. I'm looking at the big picture because that's what I want you to remember. So antigen is not as good as an antibody. Let's just put it that way. So your body is fighting and keeps a memory of this antigen um, so that the next time you come into contact, immunity is ready to fight. I cannot spell. I'm so sorry. Um, at least I didn't add a T onto that it or the whatever this word is. <laughs> I've done that before. Um, so your body's ready to fight. You've got it already. It, your memory sees it. It's like, hey, that's not a good thing to have. It's kind of like um, poisonous spiders. So let's think of that, right? Because I ooh, hate spiders. And even if they're not poisonous, but let's say you have um, wolf spiders, aren't those? Those are poisonous, right? Yeah, they're deadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so perfect. 
for this example. <laughs> um, so I know, okay, so didn't he say that, I think? Yeah. I have you in like every class, so I always remember your voice. Um, so we have a wolf spider. I have the memory because let's say, whatever, I've been, my cousin, I don't even have a cousin, my, my aunt, let's say was bit by her or the wolf spider, if it was a female. And I know that she had a reaction. It was not good. It was traumatic. I'm going to remember it. What do I remember it in the brain? What part of the brain? It starts with an H. Hypothalamus. How hypo? Hippocampus. Hippocampus. Yes. Everyone oh. starts hypothalamus and goes hippocampus. Yes, hippocampus. I have to throw it in. Sorry. So I remember in my hippocampus. Oh God. Oh my God. No. 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 She got bit. That's not good. I have that memory. So what am I going to do? Then I know what to do. The next time I see one, I know that I don't want to be near it. I need to do something about it. I'm going to grab my hairspray. By the way, that's a good tactic. Yes. I'm so awful because I don't eat meat and I don't like to kill things or get it outside if you can, but if you are just terrified, and I'm sorry if I offend anyone, spray it with hairspray and it freezes it. And then I usually try to put it outside and hope that it makes it, um, but it freezes it. <laughs> um, but, but that's the whole point. You're having that memory. You're remembering. It's the same thing as your immune system. So your immune system's remembering, hey, that's not good. I need to fight it. I need to get rid of it. And it remembers it because it grows these proteins on the outside of your specific subcategory white blood cells. So different white blood cells, and they all have different ones. And this comes up in the video, especially for the B cells, which are kind of the, I don't want to say they're the least effective to fight off, um, uh, antigens that get in the body, but they're kind of the first ones that get there. So unfortunately they don't usually make it. <laughs> they usually do die quickly and the video will explain that, but I do want to mention it, but your white blood cells will build, certain ones will build these proteins around it that will recognize it and go D D D D D. And it's almost like your eyes. That's how I think of it. My eyes are my white blood cells. And I say, Oh, wolf spider, not good. What I need to do? Last memory. Okay. Now I know it's poison because I didn't before Denise said it. I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but now, okay, I'm never going to forget. I see it. I know what it is. I know what to do. I know to get rid of it because I don't want to get bit and have the whole experience that maybe someone else had. Right. So again, trying to put it together and make sense of it. Um, so a really good example actually having to do with immunity would be if somebody had, let's say, for example, we talked about the flu, so we won't talk about that for time's sake, but let's talk about the chicken pox. So many of us have the chicken pox as children. Um, there are some of us that have them as um, adults. It usually happens in childhood. Usually, um, you don't really need to remember this, but just, it makes sense. Immunity and you're around a lot of other kids and, um, so, and actually I've, I've met parents and please, if anyone has any examples, feel free to share. I've actually met parents that purposefully exposed my mom to this. Um, when my brother got the chicken pox, she made me get them. Like she made me be exposed to him. So I would get them so that it would be over. Cause it did, is that, does that, did anyone else parents do? Or is that just me? That's probably just me. Okay. You no, know, I know my mom's, I know my mom's mom did that to her. And then that's why my mom didn't want to do it to us, but it happened anyways. Cause we all got the chicken pox vaccine, oh. but oh. my brother got it. Mm -hmm. And so we all got it. Okay. I don't feel so alone. Who was that? Kalisha. <laughs> Kalisha like popped up with your name. Sorry. I just like to know who's talking. Yeah. I've heard parents do that because I mean, I, I, I understand it. Um, you know, get, get, and what, so what happens? Chicken pox gets in the body. Is chicken pox something that we norm? And what else is, what is the other name for chicken pox? Herpes. Um, Close. Sella. Sella. Yeah. I'm thinking oh, the other one. <laughs> Varicella. Exactly. Very good. I remember from, I think it was last, I don't even know. Was it last, um, chapters or last semester? I think it was integumentary. So yes, chicken pox, also known as varicella. It's good, again, let's reiterate and bring it back. So let's say um, Pedro, I'm just looking at whoever's on my screen. I don't see his face, just his name. Um, chicken pox, 
is happening. I give it to him. What's going to happen? He's never had it before. You're going to get me sick. I am going to get you. I love you. Like you're mad. I don't have the chicken pox. I won't get you sick. I promise. Uh, well, I can't promise, but I won't get you the chicken pox. Um, so how do I give him the chicken pox? So let's just say we're, we're around each other and um, de obviously depending on how certain um, different viruses and, and whatnot are um, exchanged, but let's just say I rubbed all over him real quick and then spit on him and then <laughs> I got, I got my germs all over him. What's going to happen as soon as it gets inside of his body? What is your body going to do? Your, your white blood cell um, fighters. We'll call them someone that has not talked yet. Even if you're wrong, it's a safe place. Do you fight them by um, creating antibodies? Exactly. That was Cece, um, right? Yes. <laughs> so exactly your body's going to go, uh oh, I mean, it is immediate. Your body goes, something's here, something's here, something's here. It's not supposed to be here. Something's going on immediately. Your white blood cell subcategories, again, there's different ones and they do different roles. It's going to already, unfortunately, his body is not going to recognize it because he's never had it. And let's say he's never had any vaccinations or anything like that to prevent he is going to unfortunately not be able to fight it off because he doesn't have any immunity against it. So his antibodies are not going to be able to fight it off. However, his antibodies are going to make copies and copies and copies and make proteins in his body around his antibodies. Remember, because antibodies are good. So it's going to make proteins of memory. So it's going to create all these memories in his white, in his immunity to say, if this ever happens again, I got you. I'm going to get you. So now let's say a year later, he's immune, right? For the most part, this everyone's, I mean, there's always, um, things that can happen, but again, we're talking about for the most part. Now let's say a year later, um, he does the same thing to Ellie spits on her, rubs all his, well, all the uh, chicken pox on her. And, but Ellie has gotten chicken pox already. What's going to happen then? So let's flip it around. So now what's going to happen? It's in Ellie's body. What should happen with that chicken pocket, chicken pocket, oh my God, <laughs> with, the, with the chicken pox inside of her body because she's already had it. What is that going to look like? Uh, if I had, this is Ellie. <laughs> you mentioned mine. <laughs> um, if I already had chicken pox in my childhood and I have and it's a long time ago and I have come contact to somebody who has chicken pox, uh, my body not gonna have a chicken pox again, but it's gonna develop um, another which is this more severe and it's called um, what are your antibodies going to do to your, to those chicken pox? Are you going to have memories or no memories? Memories. Memories. So your memories, what are they going to do? They're going to go look at the chicken pox and say, mm, no. And again, we're keeping broad. It's going to go, no, I, I recognize you. I know how to take care of you. And I know, and the video is kind of funny, I think. It basically, it's like, it's almost like a, I don't want to say war, um, but like a, um, I recognize you, I'm going to get rid of you. And this, I know how to fight you. I, I'm prepared to fight you. I know what you do and do not like. So that's how I remember it. What do you do and do not like? So if I know Celine loves chicken and she hates uh, Brussels sprouts and it makes her super sick to the point where she's vomiting and she's these chicken pox in your body, I'm giving her Brussels sprouts because I want her out. Get, get her out. I don't need it because I, I recognize it and I know what, what makes her happy and what makes her not happy. Right? So that's what's going to happen in your body. So if you are already immune to chicken pox 
and uh, Pedro tries to unintentionally infect you with them, your body's going to have that memory and say, nope, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to send out my um, B cells. They're going to have the memory cells that are going to come with them. And I am going to get rid of you. And it's like, you, you, you probably won't even know you had it. You might get a slight fever or whatnot, but which again, we talk about later fever is good um, in most cases. And I will wait to talk about that so I don't get ahead of myself. So we talked about it both ways. I want to make sure that that makes sense. So if you are already have the memory, and I call it a memory, in the body versus if you do not, which means do you have antibodies or do you not have antibodies? Does that make sense in the big picture? Yes. Like why Pedro got chicken pox and Ellie did not. And it's for homeostasis. What's homeostasis? Someone that didn't answer. I know everyone that's had me wants to answer because they know it. Your body is attempt at keeping an equilibrium. Yes. Thank you, Stacey. I knew. Okay, exactly. You want, that's what your body, that's all we're trying to do. Your body's trying to save you. It's trying to save you from getting sick, from dying, from getting uncomfortable. It's a, it's doing a hundred million things right now in order to do that so that you keep safe. And a large part of it has to do with your, uh, your immunity, being able to not get sick constantly. Life would not be good with that. And that's why in our next chapter that we're going to do next week, chapter 20, we're going to do, I already have, I, we're going to do, um, I already have it planned out exactly. I didn't want to tell you because then you guys will be like, oh, that's lame. I'm not coming. We're doing Jeopardy, but I do Jeopardy in a very different way. It's just a way to do the lecture and not, it's a, it's a tough, it's a, it's a heavy topic and it can, and I really, really want to talk a lot about therapeutic communication. I want to talk a lot about how much things have changed. It's not what it used to be. And, and I did that as a chapter on its own because I feel like that's one thing that you're probably going to run into. I probably get a patient with HIV, I would probably say every two months, maybe three months. So I, I think it's something important to under to have a basic understanding of, just as a side note. So next week might be a little bit kind of, I, I love playing it. So anyhow, and it's on the computer. All right. So we have chemical markers that identify cells or molecules. Oh, we did this. Sorry. White blood cells and many chemicals that activate your own cells for the destruction of foreign antigens. Now we have the, yeah, so leukocytes. So what is the other name for leukocytes? And there's several subcategories, and I kept saying that over and over. So there's several subcategories of leukocytes, but in the very, very nitty gritty of the name, what is a leukocyte? It's not a red blood cell. It's a white blood, blood cell. cell. White blood cell. Very good. Exactly. And the reason that I, I'm mentioning it, and um, I think it's important, it says a lot in your book, and it can be, again, used interchangeably with like pathogen and um, antigen. They're, it's a, uh, they're used interchangeably. So I want you to understand. So a leukocyte is a white blood cell. And so you have your leukocytes, which is at the top, and then you have white blood cell, which means the same thing. And then you have several different categories, which you all read about in the book, which there are tons and, and they all have their own way to help your body basically not stay sick or get sick or do whatever it is that it needs to do, which you're going to learn very shortly after we watch a short video and then we'll take a break. Good job. This is kind of fun. Um, and this is more for chapter 20, but I just wanted to throw it in because I thought it was I had a, a mnemonic little thing to remember it from the video that I watched yesterday and I thought it was really cool. So we have T cells and T cells are part of our white blood cells. T cells, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about um, that are highly associated with HIV. That's kind of like the number one thing I think people think of are T4 cells, I believe it is. Um, like T cells, T cells, T cells. So where do T cells mature? You probably didn't read it and I don't expect anyone to know it. I just want to say it now. The thymus, thymus gland. Dang. Okay. Good job. <laughs> People, wow. Good job. Excellent. Where, where do two, two, I almost said too short. <laughs> where do two cells um, 
begin. They start somewhere. So where do white blood cells um, mature? Or I'm um, sorry, where do blood cells um, live and, and grow? Is it the bone marrow? Bone, bone marrow. Good job, you guys. Yay. Excellent. So white blood cells think bone marrow. Um, and so B cells specifically think of, I mean, all of them think of bone cells, but I think of B, bone cells, B cells. And that makes me remember, oh, white blood cells, bone. That's how I remember. T cells start in the bone marrow and then they mature in your thymus and T equals, T starts with, thymus starts with T, so they mature there. And is your thymus a gland or a neurotransmitter? A gland. Very good. Excellent. And do glands spit out hormones? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Very good. That was just kind of a... I just want to add that in there. Okay. Two types of this type of immunity, not produced by the person, but are obtained by another source. So this is different types of immunity that we talked about. We talked already about acquired. So now there, this is another one that we get from another source. What is that called? Passive immunity. Very good. Whose little voice is that? It's Jenny. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. I, I should have known. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Very good. And can we get, so I think I asked for examples. Can I get one example of this from somebody who hasn't um, given an answer yet? I'm going to tell Miss Lynn if no one answers. <laughs> I'm going to call her right now. Through breast milk? Very good. Through breast milk and name another OB type where they can get it before they come out of the vaginal canal or C-section. The placenta? Very good. Was that Giovanna? Giovanna? No, Kath Catherine. Oh, I try, I try. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very good, so through the, so it's passive, right? You don't have to do anything. You're just, you just get to kind of chill. You need the breastfeed, well, breastfeeding is not chilling from what I've heard. It's hard work, but you're either breastfeeding or your baby's getting it through the um, umbilical cord. And one thing to keep in mind, please, on passive immunity that I think is very important. Um, and for, and, and this is, again, I'm trying to pick out what I think is important for you as a nurse working as a general med nurse. If you go into certain, if you go into working with folks with immune problems or issues or low immunity or things like that, or things where you're working with people where this would apply, then of course you're going to learn more on the job, but we are teaching you to be med search nurses. I'm going to say it one more time today. That's why we don't, I'm not going super, 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 super deep. Um, the videos give some information. We do this and we're going to do this one more time at the end, super fast, just to kind of click it in place and then do the PowerPoint. So so passive immunity is not something that lasts forever. So it's, we try to encourage mothers to breastfeed. It doesn't always work or at least pump. Um, we don't judge, right? I mean, if they can or they choose not to or whatever, for whatever reason, but we give the information, right? We throw it up in the air. We teach. Um, this, this is why, why, why? Not just, oh, we recommend breastfeeding because this is the way it's done and it's better. And if you love your baby, you're going to do it. We're not going to say that, right? Of course not. We're going to explain why. Because because I think a lot, maybe somebody doesn't know why. And if they didn't know and they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize this could help my baby not get sick. That could totally change the whole game, right? I mean, it would for me if I didn't know. And, and even if, again, it didn't change their mind, it doesn't mean they're bad mothers. You know, again, looking at the big picture and not judging, but that's OB. I'll let Lynn handle that. Um, so, so passive immunity does not last. So that's why we do what very soon. And I don't, don't ask me the schedule. I, I, that's the, the, that pediatric OB immunization schedule, right? We start immunizations fairly young because we want this little baby to be able to fight things off because once they're, you know, they're having passive immunity. And that's why we try to say, you know, let's get them breastfeeding as long as possible. But a lot of people can't, I mean, it takes from what I heard a lot of time, I mean, you're lactating all the time. So it's a lot of work, right? And so we do the best we can. But even then, even if we are doing um, breastfeeding and doing whatnot, 
we still start with vaccinations. And, and, and I'm not going to get into the, you know, vaccination versus not, but the reasons vaccinations were um, made were so that our little guys here, because this passive immunity is not going to last. Once the breastfeeding is stopped, it, it doesn't last very long. Could you breastfeed forever and have some immunity? Yes. Um, but at some point that's not considered, um, I don't want to say normal, but I think it's child abuse um, at, at some point, if you will. That was supposed to be a joke and everyone's on mute, but that's okay. Oh, oh, what is this? What does this mean? I always say it wrong. Ap aptosis. And it sounds like it is like an abrupt word. And this is important because this is one way our leukocytes white blood cells, interchangeable, can help to fight off the bad guys. Wait, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Isn't it apoptosis? Yes. Okay. Because I remember, what I remember from like, a was, yeah, that's what I remember from ANP is like how the cells get destroyed is they literally like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's how you're supposed to remember it. What did I, what did I write? Optosis? I think you missed the pop. Yeah, the pop part. <laughs> yes. But yes, it is optosis. So literally pop. And that's how you remember. I can't fix it right now, but just pretend there's a pop in here. So when you see that word, that helps a lot. And this, I guarantee you, you will see this again. So remember it, please. So Stacey started to explain it. So somebody else, thank you, Stacey. Can somebody else please explain to me what apoptosis means? A certain type of leukocyte does what to invaders? Some eat them. So um, phagocytes, they eat them. They eat bacteria. What does um, poptosis do? I'm going to say poptosis just to get it in your head as pop. Because they have to get rid of them. Some your memory cells and everything that says, "Hey, that's not good. Let's get them." Ah. Do they cytolize? They explode. <laughs> Do they cytolize? They pop them. They they get rid of them by popping them. Exactly. So again, you have several different types of categories of your leukocytes, but this specific type, your um, uh, I'm not going to tell you which ones yet, but you have a certain one that does apoptosis, which is they go up. And they basically pop them and that's how they, they can help get rid of them. And that's actually one way, um, apoptosis, is it apoptosis are the ones that eat them, um, where your leukocytes will actually keep around. That's how you build, start to build antibodies as well, because it mixes with plasma and that's how it will help create the memory. Now, do you need to remember every sort of detail of that? No, I prefer just, if you can remember that your leukocytes, which are your white blood cells, can remember and keep memory if you have, and that's how you build your antibodies in order to help your body fight off antigens. That's what I think is more important. But apoptosis is one way, um, and I, we will teach you go through actually which ones do what, um, but at first I wanted to do these terms. Very good. So apoptosis, which I think is the easiest one to remember because of the name. Okay, so now we're gonna do three questions having to do with chapter 19. So we have a, which has to do with um, uh, a lot with alert, um, like allergies and things like that. So a severe systemic type one hypersensitivity reaction, throat, inflama throat inflama inflammation, smooth muscle spasms can occur most often. Um, histamine is involved and released and an action where breathing problems become an issue and if not treated can lead to a cascade of problems or possibly death. Epinephrine is given, IM or IV, vasopressor drugs to increase BP and possible in most severe cases, a ventilator could potentially be used. And this is in severe cases, usually when um, treatment's not working or has been delayed. Anaphylaxis. 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 Anaphylaxis.
what would you think would be a really important question if you're sitting with your patient and we, we always want to know their allergies, right? And so we ask, you know, um, are you allergic to any medications and not just medications, but animals, foods, um, uh, anything outside such as pollen or bugs. Cause I, you know, at least if I say bugs, you know, bees will usually come up. I, I usually say bees as well because sometimes people will forget, well, yeah, I'm allergic to bees and they won't mention it to you. I think that's pretty important. You could be in the hospital and get stung by a bee, right? That could happen. Or they come in and they can't talk and they drove themselves like me to the ER and I can't say anything. And they can look at my chart real quick and be like, allergic to bees. I see this, I see this, I see this and put it together, right? So it's really, really, really important to ask th those questions. And remember, it's how you ask the question because sometimes, I mean, patients don't always know what's important, right? So for this, it would be anaphylaxis, which is the most severe type of allergic reaction in a way that you can, what happens to your throat? What does histamine do to your throat? It swells your throat. It makes it swell. It causes swelling, right? That's why if I took, um, if I was, I'm going to say bagel because you'll laugh at the, well, it'll make sense. If I'm cutting a bagel and I cut my finger while I'm cutting my bagel, and I get the blood to stop, everything starts clotting. What, what happens to my finger? What color does it usually turn as it's healing? Usually it turns red, right? Because it's inflammation. And why is inflammation there? Because of histamine. So usually histamine will cause swelling. And I mean, this is why they put these two chapters together. Um, because they do have something to do with one another. However, chapter 19 kind of goes off a little more on like things like this, like anaphylaxis, but that still matches, right? Because if histamine's going there and it's making your throat swell, it would make sense of why if you cut yourself or you get stung by a bee on your arm, why, why does your arm swell? And we, I think sometimes like, especially people that don't know stuff about medical, um, like nursing or physicians or whatnot, um, MAs, uh, CNAs don't understand, or we understand, but the, those potential lay people may not understand that a lot of the times, like temperatures are good. Swelling can, can be good. The redness can be good, but we look at it sometimes and we're like, Oh my God, Oh my God, what's going on? Obviously infections not good if things are pussing and you know, you smell things and whatnot. But for the most part, that's your body's defense mechanism on how to try to make it better, right? That's why you immediately when you cut yourself, you, you'll you actually start to see swelling and redness and it hurts, right? Because we talked about what, that with the skin. We want those receptors, right? We want those, we want that so that we know, hey, oh my God, I'm cutting myself, stop so you don't cut your finger off. So does that make sense? Anaphylaxis, swelling, cutting yourself, swelling. Your histamines are trying to do your body good, if you will. And you have histamine receptors all over your body, including your brain. Because do histamines cross the blood-brain barrier just for fun for psych people that are in here? Just for fun. Denise liked this question when I asked it. I remember. Or did she leave us? No, I'm still here. <laughs> Because you, you like this one when I explained it. I'm not going to explain it because for time, but are there histamine receptors? Do they go through the blood-brain barrier? Do histamine receptors help you stay awake? Because if you take Benadryl, is that an antihistamine? Oh, it's, it makes you drowsy. It does make you drowsy because it goes oh, through the blood-brain yeah. barrier. Yeah. Yeah. Histamine does go through the blood-brain barrier. Just for fun. That was just a side thing. If you didn't get it, totally don't need to. Okay almost done with these guys, a sub, and then you'll get to get up and stretch. A substance produced in the body that in, in, increases capillary permeability, plays a role in fighting with the body's defenses, can cause inflammation in this process. Kind of what we were just talking about. So histamine, right? So let's go back and look at that. We can't go back. 
really? Oh, click to flip. Uh, okay, so substance, which is a histamine, produced in the body that increases capillary permeability. And remember, everything's about perme permeability. What's allowed to cross, what's not, this, that, whatnot. Um, a lot of things come from our capillaries and our capillaries are so small and I'm, I'm sure you guys have already learned this, that there is, they are very permeable. So um, that's going to play a huge role when your histamines are able to be permeable and go straight to wherever it needs to go in your body to help fight whatever's going on. And it's going to play that major role in fighting with your body's defenses. And it does, like I said earlier, it causes inflammation, which for maybe somebody not knowing why, like, you know, we're nurses, we're so cool. Like we look at ourselves and like, oh my God, I know what's going on. There's histamine there and like what's happening. And we're just nerds. That's why my computer says what it says on the outside of it. Um, Cause we just are, it's, it's fascinating when you actually know what's going on for somebody else. They might be like, oh my God, oh my God, I, I'm red. I must be infected. This, this must be going on. They may not understand, which is okay. Cause are they supposed to No, And that's what our jobs are. So it causes inflammation in this process. So it's really important to understand that histamine, I think a lot of people, and, and please correct me if anyone disagrees with this, but a lot of people, I mean, histamine obviously has to do with allergies, right? Achoo. And that's why we take our Claritin and all of, the, all of that stuff, because it's the same thing. It has a lot to do with more, or I'm sorry, a lot of different things in our body do, a lot of things in our body do more than one thing. So our histamine receptors, they're trying to do good, right? So when you sneeze, why are you sneezing? What is the point of sneezing? Besides of, like an allergy. And, exactly. And people to stare at you like you have COVID. Yes. Now, nowadays, if someone sneezes at my work, it's like you literally are sent home. Um, if anyone works at El Camino. But um, yeah, exactly. It, it's meant, there are purposes for why we do certain things. Why do we cough? usually unless we're choking, um, so that we get out whatever that potential foreign substance is. Very good. All right, last question here. So hives, hypersensitivity reaction, mass cells released, and this is what, when we get into the deeper part, and that's why I said, you know what, I, I'm not going to be able to get this deep, I, I got to do something. So it's not going to be a long video. I promise it's going to be like 15 to 20 minutes, but I want to, I, I think not only do you deserve it, but I think it's important and we're just, we're not going to get there. It's just not going to happen. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not a rusher and I'm not going to rush. So sorry. Um, mast cells released, especially histamine. Is that allergic reaction? I'm going to say I would take that answer. It has another name. It starts with a U. It's in chapter 19. If somebody wants to look it up. And giving the definition, which is right here. Starts with the U. It's on your terms. Urticaria. Urticaria. Exactly. Exactly. It's a hypersensitive uh, type one reaction. Exactly. The uh, anti-stimulated uh, reaction of the IgE antibodies, which causes the release of mast cell contents. Exactly. And that's when I realized when I was making it, I, I, I forgot the T, my apologies. Um, so it's your, not uricaria, it's your, someone else can say it. Um, but it, that's exactly it. And, and that was my second part where I'm like, it, there's just not enough time because I don't want you to be shortchanged on, even though I, I'm going to be completely honest, I don't really like chapter 19. I'm like, ugh, I'm just being, I'm very transparent. Chapter 18, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so cool. And like, I'm interested in it. Chapter 19, like, like all of us, some, some things we really, really love and some things we don't, but you need the information. So what I want to do is um, a couple things. I want you guys to take, it's 914, take till like 922 and just like move around. And then I have basically everything we just talked about, except for the chapter 19 stuff. I am going to show the first video. It goes so fast. All of this will be posted, 
but it does such a good job at encapsulating the terms. And we're going to start there. And then we'll, from there, we might go to his, he has two videos and then I have a Khan Academy video, Khan Academy video. And I do want to do the NCLEX questions as well. And we'll see where we are on time from that point. Any questions about any of these? And then at the end, we're going to go through this quickly. And we're going to see if how much we're able to retain and be like, okay, okay, this is coming together. And if you leave this lecture where you're like, even 45%, you're like, yeah, okay. The, the connections are being made. Cause then when you read the chapter or reread the chapter, it, it, that's when it starts coming together. Cause this is not easy stuff. It, it, it's just not. And that's okay. Because once you have all this information, it will be, it'll make much more sense. Okay, no questions before the break. So now it's 9.15, so you get till 9.23. Okay, so go, go void, go get coffee, go get tea.
Okay, so it's 923, so we'll get started because um, I want to make sure that we get these things done. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first video that incorporates a lot from chapter nine, or 18 and from what we just spoke about, and it's going to go with the NCLEX questions that I'm going to ask you as well. So we're going to start with that. We may not do the second video of his, but we will then do the third video because we might not have enough time and I want to make sure we have enough time, but they will be posted and they are very, very, in my opinion, good. They go super fast. I'm going to say that one more time. They go super fast. So please don't um, become overwhelmed because you'll have them. And you've probably seen this guy before. All right. So I want him, part one. Okay. Enjoy. Well, if you can hear him. Never ending battle. You are literally covered in staff and strep and E. coli and all sorts of dubious characters that are intent on using you and your body's many resources to feed themselves, find shelter, and reproduce as much as they want. And hey, we all gotta make a living! But it is not your job to give these guys a free lunch. So your body has developed a three-part policy toward these shady customers, and its enforcement is handled by your immune system. The immune system is different from all the other systems we've talked about this year in that it's not a specific tissue organ system kind of system. Instead, it involves a whole bunch of different tissue groups, organ systems, and specialized but widely distributed defense cells. Together, this league of extraordinary substances joins forces to perform all of the defense functions your body depends on to keep you alive in an incredibly germy world. And the first line of defense in this never-ending battle, that's your innate or non-specific defense system. Like your average frontline soldier, it's prepared to immediately engage with anyone suspicious, and it mostly includes stuff we were born with, like the external barricades of your skin and mucous membranes and internal defenses like phagocytes, antimicrobial proteins, and other attack cells. But some enemies must be fought with special forces, and here your body can deploy your adaptive or specific defense system, which is more like your SEAL Team 6. It takes more Time to call in, but it's specially designed to go after specific targets, and it keeps files on those bad guys so it knows how to handle them next time around. But today we're going to focus on your innate system and look at how it uses an arsenal of physical and chemical barriers, killer cells, and even fever to keep you healthy, proving that sometimes the symptoms we associate with illness are actually the signs that we're healing. <laughs> Just because something is simple doesn't mean that it can't be elegant. I mean, your body is capable of some incredibly sophisticated things, including defending itself from infection. But occasionally, there's something to be said for brute force, and a lot of your innate immune system's functions aren't exactly subtle. For example, your body's very first line of defense is a simple physical barrier, and it works. Like a wall around a fortress, your skin does a fantastic job of keeping out all manner of malevolent microorganisms. As long as that tough, keratinized epithelial membrane doesn't get torn open or busted up too much, you could probably, like, make snowballs out of raw sewage and still be all right. Although, no. No. Your many mucous membranes also provide a handy physical barrier. You'll remember that they align any cavity that opens up into the germy outside world, including the respiratory, digestive, urinary, and reproductive tracts. Not only do your skin and mucosa supply simple physical protection, they also pack some serious chemical weaponry. Eat some questionable leftovers for lunch? Don't worry, your stomach is literally filled with acid, so you probably are covered. Walk face first into your coworker's nasty sneeze cloud? No worries, your nasal passages can whip up a tissue box worth of sticky mucus to help trap viruses before they enter your lungs. You've also got bacteria-fighting enzymes in your saliva and lacrimal eye fluid and peptides called defensins in your skin and membranes that help keep bacteria and fungi from setting up shop around inflamed or scraped skin. Which, no matter how careful you are, you're gonna get one way or another. Maybe you shave with a dull blade or you 
just brush your teeth too hard and don't get me started about the dangers of bagel cutting. So when you've breached that first simple line of defense, it's time to call on your second line of internal innate defenses. This is where your body starts pulling strategic maneuvers like firing up a fever, releasing chemical signals, causing inflammation, or other defensive tactics that help identify and attack infectious invaders. Some of the first defensive cells on the scene are your phagocytes. Their name literally means to eat, and like Pac-Man, they indiscriminately chase down intruders and gobble them up. And they come in a few different varieties. First, you got neutrophils, which are the most abundant type of your white blood cells. They kind of self-destruct after devouring a pathogen, and in fact, you've probably seen piles of their little dead bodies, because that's what pus is made of. But the bigger, tougher phagocytes are the macrophages. They're derived from monocyte white blood cells that have moved out of the bloodstream to occupy tissues. And some are free types that patrol tissues looking for creepers, while others are fixed, attached to fibers in specific organs, devouring anything suspicious that passes by. So when a macrophage, in say the finger I just cut slicing a bagel, sees a new bacterium coming along, it snares it using cytoplasmic extensions, reels it in, completely engulfs it, and essentially digests it and spits the rest out. And unlike neutrophils, it can do this over and over again, like a boss. But not all your defense cells are phagocytic. You've also got cells with what is by far the awesomest name of any cell in the body, the natural killer cells. You can call them NK cells if you want to, but like, why would you do that? Anyway, these tiny assassins patrol your blood and lymph looking for abnormal cells and are unique in that they can kill your own cells if they are infected with viruses or have become cancerous. How can they tell? A normal healthy human cell contains a special protein on its surface called MHC1, or Major Histocompatibility Complex, but if it's infected, it stops making that protein. And if an NK cell detects a defective cell, it doesn't swallow it whole like a macrophage, it pokes it with an enzyme that triggers apoptosis, or programmed cell death pretty awesome. So those are some ways your innate immune cells handle their enemies, but how do they know where to look in the first place? So let's talk strategery. So say you're in a banana factory and you, you slip on a banana peel and you scrape your knees. Your outer fortress has been breached and the pathogens are just flooding in like orcs through Helm's Deep. Banana factories are very dirty places. Now your body wants to contain the spread of pathogens, clean up the mess, and get healing as quickly as possible. So it cues up your inflammatory response. This is basically an internal fire alarm, only it uses chemicals instead of sirens to get the message across, and instead of smoke and fire, you sense redness, swelling, heat, and pain. For example, in the event of injury, specialized mast cells in your connective tissue send out histamine molecules. And histamine is great at calling in the cavalry. For one thing, it causes vasodilation, which creates redness and heat at the site of the injury. Now, those things might freak you out a little, but they're actually signs of healing. The increased temperature, for example, ratchets up the cell's metabolic rate so they can repair themselves faster. Meanwhile, histamines and other inflammatory chemicals also increase the permeability of blood vessels, causing nearby capillaries to release protein-rich fluids. This causes swelling, which again is actually a good thing because that leaked protein helps clot blood and form scabs while the lymphatic system sucks up and filters that extra fluid, cleaning it up before putting it back into your bloodstream. And of course, like chum to sharks, an inflamed knee is also going to attract a bunch of local phagocytes, which find it easier to escape your now leaky capillaries and lymphocytes that are also flowing freely, helping to destroy pathogens while also cleaning up dead cell wreckage. And don't forget, during all this, the neutrophils have been doing their best, but they were the first wave to arrive, so by this time, they're starting to die in heaps. They're triggered when the injured knee skin cells release chemicals that begin leukocytosis, the release of neutrophils from the bone marrow, where they're made, into the bloodstream. To attract the neutrophils to the damaged area, inflamed endothelial cells in the capillaries send out chemicals that act like homing devices. And when the neutrophils arrive, they cling to the capillary walls near the injury, flatten themselves out, and squeeze through the vessel walls to get to work. Your big monocytes eventually roll up to the battle and transform into hungry macrophages, replacing the first line of now-dead neutrophils and basically just eating up any lingering enemies and then cleaning up the carnage. Now, all this works pretty well in most circumstances, but you may have noticed with a more major injury or an especially nasty virus or infection, sometimes your local troops get overrun. When white blood cells and macrophages run into more foreign invaders than they can handle, they let loose pyrogen chemicals that tap the hypothalamus and raise your body's thermostat, calling in a systemic fever to burn every Everything. The resulting temperature rise increases the metabolism of your cells so they can heal faster, and it also tells the liver and spleen to hold on to all of their iron and zinc so those things can't contribute to bacterial growth. But even then, sometimes, well, sometimes you find yourself facing a more formidable foe. That's when you call in the specialists, your adaptive immune defenses. And to learn exactly how they save the day, 
you have to watch next time. But for now, you learn that your immune system's responses begin with physical barriers like skin and mucous membranes, and when they're not enough, there are your phagocytes, the neutrophils and macrophages. You also learned about natural killer cells and the inflammatory response, and watched as all of these elements saved the day when you slipped on a banana peel. Thank you to our headmaster of learning, Linnea Boyev, and thank you to all... So, can you guys hear me? Stacey, I see you shake your head. Oh, thank you. Okay, so hopefully a couple things. Number one, at this point, I think now you see why we did integumentary before we did this chapter. It kind of makes sense because our natural body's defense and our skin and all of that, and then we move forward. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that I'm hoping that you saw some of the connection between the questions. And I know he talks faster than anyone I've ever met in my entire life. I don't know how he does it. Um, and he memorizes it. He kind of did a nice overlay of what we talked about, but I want to point out a couple things. So before we actually, let me, let me point out the couple things. We'll do a couple NCLEX questions and then I want to, I want to hear from you. So it's pretty clear. We already know we have our white blood cells and where do they live? We know that they live in the bone, right? The bone marrow. Um, there's, different types of white blood cells. And what is the other name for white blood cells? Glycocytes. Thank you. And that will, you will see that again. So if you do marks in your book or write something down, that might be something you want to write down. Glucocytes will come up again. I think that's very important because that's the medical word. So that might be something, you know, charting or whatnot, or speaking with physician or MP, that might be good. Um, I just made little notes here in order to ask you some questions here. So we did not talk about the innate part of the immune system only because that was pretty much the integumentary system. So I didn't want to do a whole bunch of repeating. The only thing I'm going to say is that innate is good unless, like he said, you cut yourself with a bagel. And I had mentioned earlier what happens. What rushes to that part of your body if you cut yourself? Histamine. Exactly. And that causes? Inflammation. Inflammation. I feel like we're on a game show. <laughs> yes, it causes inflammation. And a lot of the time we think that's bad. Something I wanted to also be able to mention is the temperature. So um, I'm sure most of us know that temperature is actually your body's way. Again, a lot of the times you think of things like, oh my God, this isn't good. We don't want this. Of course, what's going to happen if a temperature goes above like 104, 105, about 105, what can unfortunately take place? And it's not good. They usually think of babies. Think of a baby. It can happen to you too. We can get seizures. And that, that, that's something that we definitely don't want. And that's usually why if our little guys, um, usually children or yourself, if you get a fever of 105, you go to the hospital because that's too high. The Tylenol or whatnot is not working, but the fever is actually good. So if I have a fever of 102.5, I'm not taking anything for my fever. I want my fever. It's doing something to my body as he mentioned, and I'm hope, hopefully you guys have, I hope have talked about this at some point, um, and maybe this will rejarg the memory, but it's very important to know that your, your um, temperature is actually doing something. It's not just re maintaining the metabolism. It actually speeds up the metabolism of your immune system to be able to help heal whatever's going on quicker. And it's helping basically in the big picture, if you wanted to give a big answer, it's helping your body fight what's going on. There's an actual reason to keep to keep homeostasis. So we want that fever. However, there's a fine line because if it goes too high and we're like, we don't, on the other hand, want to go, yay, I have a 105 temperature. I'm better than you. Yay. No, because you can have a seizure and that can be detrimental, especially to children. Um, not especially, but they're more susceptible anyway, because they're just, they don't, they're, they're little guys. Remember our young and our, our older, right? Any questions about that? Cause that's important. And that will be, that will definitely come up because that's a common question you're going to get anywhere you work about fever and temperature, because a lot of people think that, that, it, that it's bad and they want it to go down because it's not comfortable to have a fever, right? I mean, at least to me, it's not comfortable, but it does have a, it does play a role if you will, but we, but, but we don't want it to get too high. Okay. But we know that there's at least a purpose. And the, the, the thing I thought that was kind of cool was the metabolism part to because that's a secondary part. And that's a big part of what we're talking about speeding up the metabolism of healing, which I think in this realm is probably the most important part. 
Um, we mentioned earlier about the, the different types of um, warriors, if you will. I think he called them warriors. And so um, SAC had mentioned, and I, I wanna get to the apoptosis, which we already know what that does. Um, pokes and kills, but there's different lines of defense. And I want to talk just for a second about when we get that chemical signal. So when something enters your body and you get that chemical signal and it goes, oh, oh do something, do something, do something, do something. We have a subcategory. So we have the lymphocytes and then one of the subcategories are the phagocytes. What do the phagocytes do to the invaders? Does anyone remember? I don't know why I always remember this. They, they engulf, they engulf orange material. Yeah, they eat it. And I think because I don't like the word, I just, in general, I think it's just such a weird, it's such a scary word. I always think of, I think of Pac-Man and I think of eating. So fag, fag and people say it differently, but it's pronounced because I did it on Google just to make sure it's, it's pronounced phagocyte, phagocyte, whatever, what have you, but it literally will eat you. It eats it. And it's very effective and it has these little arms and does all this stuff in it and it doesn't die. So there are different types of these um, molecules of the phagocytes. And what are the two? There's the neutrophils and the macrophages. And again, in the big world of nursing, is it so important for you to remember every single name, every single this, every single that? No. Is it important for you to understand that you have a white blood cell system in your body I think it's important that you know where it is because if you work in a special place with immunity and you're doing a, um, uh, where you're going in and taking white blood cells from the bone, I think it's important for you to understand that that's where, where it comes from. Um, when we go to chapter 20, there's a, honestly, chapter 20 is, is it's going to be an intense chapter because it really is a lot of stuff that you really do need to know um, because you are going to be working with HIV, um, AIDS, AIDS positive, one or the other, or well, yeah, one or the other, um, anywhere you work more than likely. So what I want you to really remember is, I think what would be important for you to remember is that neutrophils die quickly. So they're kind of the first on the scene. They're like, hey, yo, I'm here. And they're part of the phagocytes. So we go, we have our, our, our eaters, right, that are eating things and, and spitting it out. <laughs> so we have our phagocytes here that are eating, remember, derogatory, ah, it's just sounds scary, like they're going to eat you, they're Pac-Man. And um, in that category is your neutrophils. And what did they say that was very interesting? And it was on your last test. Dead white blood cells in general are what? You get them usually when you hurt yourself or have an infection. Plus. Plus. Exactly. exactly. And if you want to know specifically, you don't have to. I just use a general term and I say, well, if someone's curious, like, what is pus? They're dead white blood cells. Technically, they're dead neutrophils because neutrophils do not live long. They come in, they're the first on the scene, they're doing their job. Okay, cool. Yay. And then they die. And then we have our macrophages and our macrophages are a part of, um, they kind of take suit of the phagocytes where our macrophages are doing what? So think of phage and phage. What do the phages do? They I don't want to look ridiculous, but I'm going to. <laughs> you eat it. They're eating them. So when you think of phage, think of eat. That will be somewhere. So neutrophils die first. Histamines cause swelling. But is the swelling bad? No, it's trying to help you. Is the fever trying to help you? Yes. Like these are all important things I really want you to remember. The phages, they eat. These are a type of white blood cell that are eating. Okay, good. And then just quickly and is the natural killers. So we have our natural killers. And that's the unfortunate part where we get into um, the cancerous part of the, the body where your body doesn't recognize your cells as your own and it starts attacking itself. 
And unfortunately it goes, well, um, I don't know who you are. This doesn't look familiar. I'm going to start killing you or mutating you or doing something to the point where unfortunately things get out of control and things become in disarray. And then we do certain treatments. This is not, this chapter is not really um, focused on that specifically. Um, it's more having to do with what is going on as far as um, the immunity and how we take care of our body and what a fever means, what this means, what that means. Is this good? Is it bad? How does it do it? Why does it do it? And whatnot. And you'll notice if you haven't looked at the worksheet, there's 50 questions. I'm sorry, it is a lot. I'm, I'm making it half point per question, um, point wise to make it so that it's less points. So it's only, it's 25 points rather than 50. And um, a lot of this will then re-correlate what we're talking about. So at this point, and hopefully you've read, and if you haven't read, I, I, I kid you not, and I, I promise you there is a method to this madness that I do, it, it will come together. But are there any questions thus far before we watch the, I really want you guys to see the other video, but we're going to do these questions first from the NCLEX because the NCLEX is important. Okay, so we're going to share a screen, or I am. And we are going to do a couple questions. All right, so I wanna start with number 646. I picked out specifically for us. Hopefully you guys can see that. So um, if possible, please, we'll, if you've answered a question, maybe try like, like not say anything for like 15 seconds. And then of course, take over if, if need be. So number 646, the nurse is assisting with planning the care of a client with a diagnosis of immunodeficiency. The nurse should incorporate which intervention as a priority. And remember, we like to talk about this. Priority is obviously bolded in the plan of care. So what in this plan of care, we have immunodeficiency. So we're going to look at that word. Okay. They don't give us an age, so I'm not... I don't know how old this client is, so I can't put that into the incorporation of the question, but I know they're immunocompromised and I'm looking for a priority of the plan of care. This is a very, in my opinion, kind of easy question. If you get it wrong, it doesn't, it's okay. But um, so what is the most important thing here? Number one, we want to protect the client from infection. Number two, provide emotional support to decrease fear. Number three, encourage discussion about lifestyle changes. Or number four, identify factors that decrease the immune function. So we're going to do all of these things, right? Of course, absolutely. I'm going to provide emotional support because an immune compromised patient is probably going to be scared. I would be scared. Um, I'm sure many people would be scared uh, because they don't want to get sick because it could potentially lead to death if we're thinking just throwing it out there because that's our next chapter. If somebody has HIV, that could be a very scary thing. And especially if they're not um, completely uh, um, educated. So number one, protecting the client from infection. Of course, I, I like this question. I'm going to hold on to it, right? Actually, can somebody, how about somebody else? I want someone else to talk me through the rest of this. If you haven't talked, and then we'll wait 10 more seconds and then someone else can take over. All right, someone else take over. Because we know it's number one or four. We know that. Wait, so do you want us to go through two and three also or no? Yes. Um, okay, so number two, uh, you would want to provide emotional support uh, to decrease fear. I would say that's mainly because um, when you're immunocompromised, stress can like make you even more immunocompromised. So decreasing the stress because fear equals stress. Um, encouraging decision, uh, discussion about lifestyle changes. Uh, that's going to be important because obviously, you know, lifestyle changes include kind of like maybe environmental factors that you can kind of change to increase your immune response. And then I think it's number four that's correct because you would need to identify factors that decrease the immune function before like, you would wanna find out like what you wanna protect the client from maybe. 
compared to just protecting them from infection. I don't know. That's just the way that I'm thinking. Like you would need to figure out the factors that decrease their immune function before protecting them from those. Because obviously those are going to be your priority um, things that you're going to try to protect them from. And, and one, and like I said, it's going to be number one or number four. Um, you beautifully describe number two and number three. And I just want to make it just a quick moment about that. This can trip people up so easily, right? Um, so if, if we're going to do, again, we're doing all of these things, right? Are we doing all these things? But the NCLEX is mean and they're not going to let us choose all four. So we have to figure out, okay, immunodeficiency and priority. If I could say one thing to this patient, just one, and then never see them again, what am I going to say or what am I going to do? Number one or number four? Which is, this is hard. I'm, I'm not, this is a really, actually, this is not an easy question because I didn't even realize number four said identifying factors. Number four. Why number four and why not number one? Because it's, it's not, it's actually not number four. I would like to educate the patient first about decreasing the immune, like the factors that decrease the immune system. And then after educating them, then they know what to do in the next step, like protecting them from infection. Exactly. So let's reread the question, which, which is exactly what I would think. The nurse is assisting with planning the care of a client with a diagnosis of, a, uh, let's just say HIV. The nurse should incorporate, inc incorporate which intervention as a priority in the plan of care? Most important. Protecting the client from infection. So they're trying to trick you. They want to know, do you know? So they, they mentioned immune function in number four because they mentioned immunodeficiency in the question. Number one, they're trying to, they're, they're trying to trick you there. Um, the, not that this is the wrong question, but like if you, again, priority, one thing could leave and do nothing else. Number one, protecting the client from infection. Do we know that somebody with HIV, and I'm just making that one up because I know for sure we all know that's an immunocompromised patient, protecting the client from infection. What happens if an immunocompromised patient such as someone with HIV gets an infection? They could die. They could die. So number one and number four, this is a stupid question. I hate this question because really to me, I look at it and I'm like, it's number one, no, no doubt. It, it just makes sense to me. And does anybody else under, do, can anybody else um, explain to me why they think it's number one over number four, unless they don't agree with me? I and change my mind. Why do you change your mind? <laughs> Just because, because when you, and you've like reiterated this so many times of like, if you could do one thing and one thing only, it kind of makes me, okay, if I look at the answers and try and think backwards, like what would happen if I didn't do this? like the outcome of not protecting them from infection versus the outcome of not identifying those factors, that number one is gonna have more of a detrimental effect if you don't do that intervention, so, okay. I wish you could see my face close. I don't know why I'm getting teary. I'm, I'm so weird lately. I'm a, I'm a mess. I just, you guys are doing so good. Um, but no, and I'm glad, I, I'm actually glad you got it wrong at first. Um, and I'm glad, I, like I say, make the mistakes here. Let's talk about it here. Um, and I know we don't have tons of time to go over and collect over and over and over, but I think these are important to do um, because, and I'm not trying to be mean and lecturing and, and, and honestly, we're not going to get to the PowerPoint. I will do it. I promise you, I will not do this every time, but the, fitting five chapters into three weeks is just insane. And then I saw it was Columbus day on the 12th and I'm like, I like called Marsha with a panic. Um, but we do have school on Columbus day. Um, so next time we will, like I said, we're going to do jeopardy. It's going to be, it's going to be, and I'm going to call some of you and we're going to maybe do some things. You probably already know who I'm going to call. Um, and we're going to maybe do a little role playing if you want to with me. Um, but I, I think the next chapter is probably one of the most important ones that we're doing this semester, this module. Um, does anyone have anything else to say about 646? I can read you the rationale. I planned on doing that at the end. But, and when Stacey said, you've said this time and again, if you haven't heard it, it's because you weren't in my clinical. If you're in my clinical, you've heard it time and time again. It's not because you weren't paying attention. It's just Stacey's been in like every clinical I've had. Almost. 
So protecting the client from infection, that is the most important thing. Jessica, what you said made so much sense. And honestly, I would probably pick that one too. If I was a new nurse I, on taking my NCLEX, probably would pick that one too. But this is why we do this. So we learn these little hints and tricks. Okay. Which one did I want to do? I picked out specific ones that, that we talked about today. 647. The client calls the office of the primary health care provider and states to the nurse that they were just stung by a bumblebee while gardening. The client is afraid of a severe reaction because their neighbor experienced a reaction just one week ago. Which should the appropriate, what is the appropriate nursing action? Number one, advise the client to soak the site in hydrogen peroxide. Number two, ask the client if they've ever sustained a bee sting in the past. Number three, tell the client to call an ambulance for transport to the emergency room. And number four, tell the client not to worry about the sting unless difficulty with breathing occurs. So I'm gonna handle this one just for time and then I'll let somebody else handle the next one. So this is number 647, okay. So looking at, I always wanna identify what's important in the question. So they're trying to throw us off by talking about the neighbor. The neighbor has nothing to do with anything um, other than, you know, I mean, potential reaction. So the client that just got stung, that's our patient. That's who we're concerned about right now in the now. The client is afraid that a severe reaction might happen. I would be afraid too. I've never gotten stung. I tell everyone I'm allergic so that they'll protect me. Um, if you've been in my clinical, you probably know that because I'm scared to death to get stung. So I just say I'm allergic and then they protect me. Um, so the client is afraid and because their neighbor just had this reaction a week ago. And so what thing do I want to do first if I get this call? Now, the client is not calling me saying, oh my God, I can't breathe. Help, 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 or anything like that, right? They're not in distress. Did they say anything about not being able to breathe? No. Did they say anything about their arm is swelling to the point of like eight inches high? No. Keep all, keeping all of the facts in mind, not making things up. And they're trying to trick you. So looking at these questions, Number one, advise the patient to soak the sign hydrogen peroxide. What is the most important thing? Ask the client if they've ever sustained a bee sting in the past. I'm just going to stop there. Usually I'll go through all of them, but for time, why, between number one and number two, which one do we think is more important? Number two. Number two. And two. why? To see if they've had any reaction in the past. Perfect. And if you look at all, and that's exactly right. The answer is number two. We want to know, have you had a bee sting in the past? Why well, don't want to know that? Are you going to have a reaction? Do we need to call an ambulance? I'm not going to call an ambulance. You got a bee sting. I don't know what's going to happen. But if they say, yes, I've had anaphylaxis. I had a bee sting two years ago. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get that ambulance there right away. So what is the most important thing we can do? Again, if you do one thing, what am I going to do? And what am I going to ask? I'm going to ask you, have you had this sting? And then of course, we would call the ambulance or say, you know, say is your wife home or whatever. Actually, I'd call an ambulance because they can treat you in the ambulance. That would be better. So the answer would be number two. I don't think anyone has any questions about that one. Please let me know. Does that make sense? I wouldn't say don't worry. If you have trouble breathing, you're okay. I would rather know, have, have you had an issue in the past so that I could help my patient? I don't want to pass the buck or just kind of push them to the side and ignore them. That's what we call that. Kind of like, uh, well, if, uh, no. And then we can give them proper instruction. Does that make sense to everyone? Please tell me if it doesn't. Okay. I like Makes that. Sense. I really like that question. I wish every question was like that on the NCLEX. It's not. Um, <laughs> okay. Number 648. Okay. Our last one. The nurse is assisting with the administration of immunizations at a healthcare clinic. The nurse should understand that immunization provides which protection? Number one, protection from all diseases. Number two, innate immunity from disease. Number three, natural immunity from disease. Or number four, acquired immunity from disease. So Kalisha can't answer this one and Stacey cannot answer this one. And Kalisha, only because you, you explained it last time. So talk us through this. What are, what are we looking for in the, in the question and what are we looking for in the answer? So we know an immunization is happening. We know what kind, 
what kind of, um, when we get an immunization, is that uh, natural, innate, um, passive, or acquired? Acquired. Mm -hmm. Acquired. It is acquired. So automatically, my eyes are drawn to number four, acquired immunity from disease. That would make sense. I'm going to a healthcare clinic. I'm getting an immunization. Do, and it doesn't say, number one, does any immunization protect you from all diseases? No. Oh. No. no, not one that I've ever heard of. So I would immediately get rid of that one because that doesn't, it doesn't exist. We, we just know that from common, our knowledge that we know that we've learned over this last long, long, long time of years being in school. And then number two, we know it's not um, innate because innate is something like what the guy was talking about earlier, like your skin or whatnot has nothing to do with it. Number three, naturally acquired we, or immunity. We know it's not that because it's not me sneezing and um, well acquired natural would be me sneezing on Stacy, and then acquired immunity from the disease we know is, is an immunization right because we're they're talking about immunization we're acquiring the immunity from the disease because we are getting the injection and when we get that injection what happens we create antibodies antibodies exactly either from a very low 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 amount of the disease being still there or a deadened disease deadened part of that um disease very good. Any questions about that one? Again, I wish this one was on the end class. It's probably not. Good. Okay, perfect. Good job. Okay, so it is 9.59. Can you guys stand one more video and then we're done? And then I'll make the video on the PowerPoint, which is very quick, because um, a lot of it we already talked about. I really want you to see it. And then I'll make a like 15 to 20 minute on chapter 19. If you don't want to say you don't have okay. to. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> it's happening. I love this guy. I don't know. I He annoys most people, but I think he's. Love our patron. I love him. Okay. Okay. No, stop share. I want to pull up this guy. Khan Academy. This is, is this a, the fast talking guy? No. No. I kind of, I feel like that was super soothing though. I don't know, at least for me, like how fast he was talking. I, uh, me too. I'm going to post all of them as well. So you will get to watch it, please. I, I, I very highly recommend that you watch the second part because it goes with the first part. And it, it again, it, it brings everything together. So please, please watch all three. Um, well, you're watching two. I'd watch them again, but watch number two, please talked a little bit about the immune system. And in that video, we focused on the nonspecific. Can you guys hear that? I, I need a yes, because I can't see you. Yes. Yes. Do you, you want to see it too, or just are we just listening? Okay. Um, wait, you can't see it? No. I don't see it yet. And I, forgot. I got excited because I was talking to Stacey. Sorry. We're talking about the, the fast guy. It's your fault. Let's share. I do this like 25 times a day. You'd think I'd get this down by now. Share screen. There you go. Where'd you go? Now you see it, right? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Or the innate immune system. So let me write that. Non-specific non-specific immune system and even in the non-specific immune system we subdivided that into kind of the first line kind of barriers and those were things like the skin or the stomach acid or uh, the the acidity of of the oils on the outside of your skin these are just natural barriers to not allowing things inside of your body but then once they get in so you can almost imagine these were the first line first line of defense. And then you had your second line of defense, but these are still nonspecific. And when we say nonspecific, it means that they don't necessarily know what type of virus, what type of protein, what type of bacteria. They just know that this thing looks shady. Let me eat it up. Let me kill it. Let me have an inflammatory response. So in there, we said, well, there's an inflammatory response, which I'm actually going to do. I'm going to talk about after we do Video, videos on the specific immune system. You have your inflammatory response, which really just gets things to where the action is at. And then you also have your phagocytes. 
phagocytes, which are these things, these cells that are engulfing things. Phagocytes. And just so you know, all the phagocytes that we talked about in the last video, these are all instances of white blood cells or leukocytes. So these are all, maybe I'll write that in white. These phagocytes right here, these are all, you know, when I talk about dendritic cells and, and, and macrophages and neutrophils, these were all white blood cells. These weren't all the kinds of white blood cells we're about to talk about more. And sometimes the other word for white blood cell is also leukocyte. Leukocyte. So that is non-specific. It just said, well, one, it just doesn't let you in. But then when you're in, it says, hey, you're just shady. I'm going to eat you up. I have receptors. You have some double-stranded DNA floating around. Only viruses have double-strand DNA. I'm going to eat you up. I don't know what type of virus you are. I don't know if I've seen you before or not. That's why it's non-specific. Now, the really interesting thing about our immune system, and, and, and this nonspecific, this is, this is kind of a, a this is, exists across many, many, many species and, 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 and types of organisms, but the specific, the specific is kind of a, it's, it's thought to be a newer adaptation. What I'm going to talk about is the, the specific immune system that's particular to humans. So you have the specific, you have your specific immune system. That's our other classification. Let me do it like do it like that. So then you have your specific, specific, or you can imagine it's an adaptive immune system. So, and yeah, I think you've, you, you've probably heard of things like that. Oh, I have, I have a, a resistance to uh, that, that uh, bacteria or that virus. So this is adaptive. And it's really all based on having exposure to things. And I'm going to, and you know, within within the specific immune system. We talked a little, some of when we talked about the antigen presenting uh, uh, molecules that the phagocytes do, that plays a role in this. We're gonna go into more detail, but I don't wanna confuse you. But the main actors here are called the lymphocytes, not to be confused with leukocytes because they still are leukocytes. So let me write this down, lymphocytes. So these are the main actors, lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, and I want, I want to, you know, these are specific. Phagocytes, for the most part, are nonspecific, but both of these are all white blood cells. Lymphocytes are another type of white blood cell or a leukocyte. Don't want to confuse you with, you know, this convoluted diagram, but I just want to make the terminology clear. When someone talks about a white blood cell, they're really just talking about a set of cells that when people first tried to separate the components of blood, you'd have your red blood cells that would kind of settle in the bottom. Then you'd have this layer of white frothy stuff in the middle that was really made of white blood cells. And then on the top, you had the fluid, the plasma uh, from your blood, the kind of the watery part. So that's where the name came from, but they have different roles, but they interact with each other. Now, lymphocytes, can be divided into B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, usually referred to as B cells, and T lymphocytes. You say, wait, you know, where do those words B and T? T lymphocytes. And the B and T just come from where they developed. B lymphocytes were first recognized in the, in, in the bursa of Fabricius. That's what it's called, B. That's actually a part of birds that participate in the immune system. And so the B came from bursa. But B also applies to the hum human immune system because it's produced in bone marrow. So that might be an easier way to remember. It's produced in bone marrow. It's developed in bone marrow bone marrow, but historically the B came from the bursa of Fabricius, just in case you want to know, but it's easy to remember the B could also stand for bone marrow because that's where it produced. T lymphocytes actually do start off in the bone marrow, but they mature and become what they, what they are in the thymus. So that's where the T comes from, T for thymus. Now in this video, I'm going to focus just on the B lymphocytes, because frankly, if I focused on everything, it would be an hour long video. But the B lymphocytes, frankly, on some level, uh, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to pick and choose favorites, but for something in my brain, I just really like the B lymphocytes. So the B lymphocytes participate in what's called the humoral response. Humoral, and I'll tell you what humoral means in a second. Humoral doesn't mean it's funny. Humoral response. Humoral response, and you'll see the T lymphocytes participate in what's called the cell mediated response. And we're going to do that in a future video. Cell mediated response. So they actually do uh, a certain classes of T lymphocytes. We'll see that they're helper, 
there are helper T cells, and then there are cytotoxic T cells. I know it's all very confusing the first time you see it. But that's why I just want to focus on just this part right here. We're going to see in the future that the helper T cells play a role in amplifying and really activating this humoral response. But a simple way to think about the difference between the humoral response and the cell-mediated response is when I get infected, let's say I get infected by a virus, right? Let's say, you know, these are, let's say that's my body cell and that's my body cell. At first, when a virus comes into my system, it's just floating around in the fluids in my system. And that when, when the fluids of our system, that's really what humoral responds to into the, into the uh, uh, humoral fluids of your body. So you have your viruses, let me do it in a different color. You know, these are little viruses floating around. So while they're floating around and they're not sitting inside of cells, when they're not sitting inside of cells, that's where the humoral response can come into play. Same thing if we have little bacteria floating around and they haven't infiltrated cells yet, they're just floating around in the fluid, then the humoral response will be can, can be useful for that now if all of a sudden these guys have infiltrated cells if they've infiltrated cells so if the cells are now infected with the virus and they're producing the virus is using the, the mechanisms of the cell to produce more then all of a sudden we have to be a little bit more sophisticated in, in how we deal with these cells and how we deal with the viruses because they're not just going to be floating around anymore we probably want to just kill this cell even though it was one of our our own but now it's helping to make viruses or maybe it's been colonized by bacteria so in either case you want to kill this and that we'll talk more about that in the cell mediated Let's just talk about the humoral, the humoral response right now that deals with B lymphocytes. Okay. So if we would have watched them in order, it would have made a little bit more sense why I chose to do it in the way I did. Um, but I didn't want to, we don't, we, we don't have time. So the most important part of that video, the T cells, as I said, that's more next week. And that's why I like that video because it kind of broke it off and it didn't really talk about that. And it more focused on the B cells, which are like we had mentioned before. And, and, and a lot of these have double names and that's kind of important to understand. And if you have not read yet, this is something I wrote down. If you have not read yet, this is going to make a lot more sense when you read. If you have not read, it's kind of like, what are you, well, huh, huh? This, there's so much going on. If once you read, it's going to come together. So there's a couple things that are going to happen. I'm going to create a discussion board because I am going to be posting the video from the um, PowerPoint as well as a little bit more from chapter nine of what's important as a nurse. Because again, I don't want to go too, too, too deep. Um, as well as I might post discussions or questions about the chapter we just talked about because we don't have time to go over. Remember at the end, I said, oh, we're going to go over it again. I think you guys got it too. Um, but I'm going to post all three videos that we were going to watch, or the two videos we did watch, the one we were going to watch. Please watch the second video of the Fast Talker. I think that's extremely important, and it will help to bring things together. Um, you understand the lingo, I think a little bit better, the language. Read the chapters. It will make so much sense. We'll have the discussion board. I'm going to download this video. And I'm gonna create, like I said, the two short PowerPoints, uh, the one on the PowerPoint and the one on chapter 19, just to make sure that we have the information that we need to be able to understand the chapters a little bit more. And the discussion board, so if we have questions, so I will check the discussion board daily. That way we can continue the conversation because we didn't get through it because this was our first time and we're all human and we learn as we go. So any questions, and I think I'm not getting a lot of questions because, and it totally is okay, because I think a lot of people probably didn't read yet, and, and it makes it a little bit more confusing. So, it definitely has been a while. Oh, you never watched a Khan Academy video? They're great. They're great if you need help. I'm reading the, the chat. So, the, we non-specific, just, uh, that was one of the questions real quick, and then I'll let you guys go. Um, and you can sign off, because technically class is over. And thank you, 24 of you stayed, so I appreciate that. Um, 
non-specific and specific. So specific would be, hey, I know you for sure. Non-specific is more of the, ah, the neutrophils, I need you. I I'm going to go out right now and get you because I'm going to start the process. So, and that's what the, the humoral, or it's not humorous, as he said. That's kind of the first line that says, hey, something's wrong, like the detector. And then the whole thing starts going. And depending on what's happening in the body, that will determine what's going to happen, where it's going to go, and which one's important. And that's what the chapter will describe. So now that you have the terms, the videos, I would definitely watch them again. And the second one and all of that will be on the discussion board. I will check it once a day. I'm going to finish grading all of the quizzes. I need to take a shower. And after that, all of the tests, I'm sorry, will be graded. Um, we'll do the discussion board, the videos, and I will post this. Our next session, like I said, it's going to be done through Jeopardy. And I'm going to be contacting, I think, at least two of you to do a role play with me um, if you so choose one will be a woman and one will be a man just so that it's different um, you already know for sure one of you who I'm calling so you will hear from me today um, does anyone have any other questions and yeah Pedro it's gonna be you <laughs> you're gonna be my male spokesperson and Stacey, if you so choose desire or desire to, you'll be the female spokesperson. What if I don't pick up the phone? It'll be through, um, uh, it'll be through this. You won't have a choice. If you're, if you're on here and you leave me, you're in trouble. <laughs> so if you're leaving feeling confused, I'm glad. I want you to feel a little bit confused because it will all come together, if that makes any sense at all. And especially if you saw that six page worksheet that I had, things are going to start clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. And I had several students just as a side note, and then we're done in one minute at 10 15. I'm just making it up. Uh, my own time is I had several very, 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 very nervous students and everyone did really, really well. So just keep that in mind, keep that in the back of your head. Okay. And if you have questions, go to the discussion board or text me, but I would like to keep the discussion board because then we can all learn from it. Is that good? Stacey, you don't have to stop me. Nobody has to stop me. I'm, I'm good at this now. I can get off on time. Any questions? Katrina, Amy, Jennifer, Alicia, Daniel, Vanessa, Pedro, Celine. We're good. Okay. So if you, okay. If you have not read, can you guys try to please read by Wednesday, if possible? That would be very, very helpful if you can. Okay. Because I really want to get like the discussion board going and, and, and ha so that if it didn't make sense, I can make changes. Okay. Well, thank you for staying. You guys are fun. Are you flipping me off? Jessica? Oh, you have a question. <laughs> yes. Oh, blah. thank you, Miss Amanda. You're welcome. Good. I have a question. Oh, the work, you'll see it, uh, syllabus. And um, I uploaded two things last night at like 7 p.m. Because I was told I didn't have enough. So if, if you go to the assignments, all of your assignments are done. I'm not adding anything else. It's done. So it's there, I promise. So look on your syllabus. If you go to syllabus, please, you'll see your whole schedule. I wrote it, the entire thing out for you. And then if you look on your assignments, everything is there with the day due and all of that. So we're good. It is complete. Perfect. I see smiles, so that's good. All right, lovely folks. Thank you for joining me on this Monday morning. Go get some Starbucks or Uber Eats. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Amanda. Thank, Thank you, Miss Amanda. Thank you, Miss Amanda. Thank you. I miss you all so much. Have a good day. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Let me know if you need anything. Bye, guys. <laughs>